A year ago, nearly to the day, a year ago tomorrow, that Holly got her first career start against Texas Tech. And Texas went 14 and one the rest of the way. And we are underway here at the Moody Center. Texas Tech comes in, as we said, on the bubble, number 72 in the net rankings. And according to Charlie Cream, amongst the first four teams out, Hattie Fine going to work. It's a good look early on. Texas has struggled in the past against Texas Tech's different defenses they throw, but just that simple 2-3 zone is something that's been a bit of a, a question mark for how Texas will attack it. Katie Farrell traveling. Ali has a good look. Passed it up to Gonzalez. And we see how deliberate Texas is against this 2-3 zone for Texas Tech. Looks like a little switch up to man-to-man -man now. Harmon pull-up jumper buries it. Rory Harmon averaging just over 11 points per game. Seen some great games from her 24 at Kansas over the weekend. Having a career year, second best field goal percentage in the conference. Bryn Gerlich, daughter of head coach Krista, losing it. She's been on fire over the last couple of games. Heaves one up. She is shooting better than 64% from downtown over her last two games plus. Well, and she's a fifth-year senior, so somebody that's heady out there knows what uh, Krista Gerlich, her mother, wants out on the floor. Gaston. Had trouble with that one. They have won three out of the last five against well, the Longhorns. Yeah, these numbers show it all from the game in Lubbock. 22 points in the paint for a team that averages almost 40 uh, with Texas. They only got to the line six times. Texas Tech game plan worked perfectly in game one this season. And Texas without their second leading scorer tonight. Their season leader in three-pointers, Sonia Morris. Riley McKinney looking for space. Scott shot clock under 10 gliding into the paint and a foul on Texas Those players are going to be switching off onto guards and have to get down in the defensive stance And this is exactly what Texas Tech did uh, in January in game one Harvard over to Shaley Gonzalez thought about the three Dumping it down low to Muhammad. She's double teamed and loses the ball, but a foul call. And she's just been such a force on the inside and her versatility, also her ability to step out offensively. She has really answered the call. Vic Schaefer challenged her at the beginning of the season. Speak to all these players. They all love her and say she's got a sneaky sense of humor. She's delivered on the court. That's all that's mattered this year. And Amina Muhammad delivers at the free throw line. Texas back up by one. That's their first point in three and a half minutes. Well, and Texas needs to be careful right now. They have 14 fouls, so next foul, uh, Texas Tech will be at the free throw line shooting the bonus. Pretty similar start to their last meeting in Lubbock. Gerlich goes glass. Yeah, pretty good job by Bryn Gerlich right there. The fans don't like it. It's a, as we've talked, it's a rivalry. It's gonna be heated all game. And immediately, Vic Schaefer points to the bench. Taylor Jones getting ready to check in. Muhammad tried to go baseline, no room. A nice ball movement. Gonzalez, yes! <laughs> Shaley Gonzalez with Texas's first field goal in five minutes. And it's the first time Texas has not been tentative offensively. They've moved the ball shot with confidence. Throwing that one away is Katie Farrell. Well, Texas has multiple shooters, so when they, once they get the ball to a four player and put more pressure on the defense, they can kick out. They move the basketball along the perimeter. Shelly Gonzalez, a tremendous shooter. She shot the ball so well, I think, in the last five games. A lot of confidence. Transfer from BYU. We've talked a lot about how well she scored when she was at BYU. What a tremendous pickup she was for Vic Schaefer and the Texas Longhorns. Now with 33 pointers on the season, second most on the Longhorns. Less than three to play in the first quarter. Harmon bounces around and out, but gets the board. They lost track of her down in the paint. Taylor Jones double teamed. Texas finding no room down low. They go back to Jones. She beats the double team for the score. Yeah, Taylor Jones didn't look comfortable down there at all, but she kept her composure and did a nice job of using that length of hers to score. 
Bailey Maupin, second leading scorer this year for Tech, averaging 10 and a half. That's a tough matchup for Maupin against Rory Harmon. Nowhere to go, racing around Muhammad, and somehow gets it to go in. Yeah, she, that is a young lady with a lot of confidence. Great putting the ball on the floor, great hops. Jones, double team, kicks it out to Muhammad, drive into the bucket, unable to finish. We talked about offensive rebounds. Texas was several here early on. Harmon looking for contact. Didn't get the whistle, but Texas with another offensive rebound. Gonzalez, and again, she buries the three. Yeah, four offensive rebounds for Texas. Farrell out to Maupin. Spinning around, takes a tumble. No whistle, the refs letting him play so far tonight. Harmon, pull up jumper, so good at that, but doesn't get it to fall. Texas, another offensive board. Yeah, Amina Muhammad's working hard on the interior. Maybe isn't getting the ball every time, but she's tipping it. Muhammad drive into the paint, and Texas up 15 to eight. Katie Farrell, the grad transfer from UT Arlington. Krista Gerlich used to coach, turns it over. Gonzalez taking it to the rack. Final seconds of the first quarter. Crowd on their feet here at the Moody Center. Farrell got a hurry, heaves it up. No good. And the Longhorns end the quarter on a 7-0 run. Shaley Gonzalez leading the way with eight points and two trays. Texas up 17-8 after one. They turned up the heat defensively. They hit the offensive boards. Those two things made a huge difference. Second chance points 10-0 in favor of Texas. Crashing the boards offensively. Amber Scott has it stolen away by the freshman Muhammad. Her length has bothered opposing shooters and players all season long. Taylor Jones collects, double team, tied up. Possession arrow, Texas. The thing about Amina Muhammad, when you put her into the lineup in this particular game, when you have all those screens at the top of the key. Heaved up from the outside, Gonzalez with her first miss from distance tonight. Amber Scott, meanwhile, just one point so far on one attempt, passes it off. <laughs> Texas Tech going with some height. Jasmine Lewis, the 6'4 junior transfer in there. Nobody in the starting lineup for Texas Tech taller than 6'1". Saw that against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State as well as they didn't have a lot of height in their starting lineup. And Lewis missed both. Usually a 72% free throw shooter. Rory Harmon from the wing. Off the top of the backboard, Muhammad, another offensive rebound. Andrea, it sounded like a broken record. So active as a freshman. She's such a big contributor for Texas. You see Texas forcing a quick shot. Again, Vic Schaefer has a little bit of uh, a few options on the interior. It's nice that he has Amina Muhammad he can put in there that's active. The size of Jones inside. Good job. Got it off before the double team got to her. 6-1 freshman. Gives it up. Amber Scott. And Amina Muhammad in the middle right there, guarding every single switch. And Amber Scott gets her first field goal of the night. Yeah, and that's just the quality player for Amber Scott, able to just stay with it, get to the rim. Spent her first two years of college ball playing for Vic Schaefer at Mississippi State, where they went 70 and five in two seasons. Jones nearly threw it away. Gonzalez from the corner. That is the last player Texas Tech wants to leave open. Yeah, I think Shea, Shea Holly and Shaley Gonzalez from the corner, they are deadly. Texas shoots so well from the, both sides on the corner. Texas has already hit more threes than they did all of the previous matchup against Tech. Forcing another turnover and a whistle. And they're reviewing that foul. Well, it, 
And just watch how she grabs her from behind. And, and you can't uh, yeah. grab somebody from behind to, to try to get an obvious advantage. Shaley Gonzalez, 85% free throw shooter. It's interesting that Bray, Bray Amber Scott did that. You know, that shows you just the quickness of uh, Roy Harmon, but also the frustration right now for Texas Tech. I think Texas Tech is hopeful to be able to make a run like that. They've got a lot of seniors, a lot of pieces. Just a tough conference this year. Amina Mohammed. Nice move, couldn't finish. And Topa Onu now getting her opportunity in the game for Texas Tech on the inside. So, Bryn, Bryn, um, Krista Gerlich going with yet another lineup. From the outside, it's Gerlich. No. Shea Holly right in the face of Briamber Scott. Good defense on that last play. 14 on the shot clock. And again, good defense. Sonia Morris looks on. Again, missing her first game as a Longhorn with a lower body injury. She was coming off back-to-back 40-minute -back outings. But sitting out this one, Shea Holly darting in front of that one. But Tech gets it back. Fresh shot clock. Scott driving right into Taylor Jones, who blocks her. But Scott stayed with it. Just a, an ability to stick with plays. You see the fact that she's been around for a while, played for several different ball cubs, knows what it means to have to get down and dirty and try to come back from uh, uh, being down. Muhammad, offensive rebound and then some. There's the two freshmen going at each other with Freelon and Muhammad. Gonzalez back to Muhammad, they go. Doing the dirty work in the paint. Jones can't handle it. And Tech finally comes up with the board. Jasmine Shavers in there, number three for Texas Tech, is having to box out the six foot four Taylor Jones. Can you see the two post players having to defend that high screen on the ball? Scott drains it, team leading 32nd three pointer of the season. Again, she's averaging 21 points per game in Big 12 play. Well, coming up big here in the second quarter to. Try to keep it close here. Jones, the double team is there. Tentative about turning to the middle. She likes to go to the middle, and so she tried to go baseline clear out right there. Will they be able to go the full 40 or extended minutes? Do you think that's kind of be the that's kind of going to be the difference this season when you get into the postseason? Can those post players find Jones stay out of foul trouble? Right now, Taylor Jones, the only Longhorn with multiple fouls. Maupin, yes. One huge play. Tech needed that. Well, Krista Gerlich continues to use different options at the point guard position. Did a really nice job there. Yeah, you know, somewhere between 10 and 16. Uh, right now, their net ranking is 10, but they're coat in the polls. They're at 20 as of right now. Trying to slow down Tech, who's on an 8 0 run. Maupin missed the free throw. So unable to complete the four-point play. One in Tonda, the freshman, driving into the paint and drew the foul on Farrell. A nice job by one in Tonda. Tonda didn't play the last game against Kansas, averaging about five points per contest. Her ability athletically really makes a difference out there, prepares her to play at this level immediately. She's just playing behind a couple of very experienced players at the three position. Each team has scored 10 points in this quarter. At one point, Texas was on a 16-2 run. Bryn Gerlich dishing down low. Tofeono looked like she wasn't quite expecting it. Met by Gonzalez in five. That one kicked out of bounds. A shot clock will reset to 20. Yeah, it's unfortunate that Shaley Gonzalez kicked it. Holly bouncing around in front of Scott. Able to find Maupin into the corner. Tech works it around to Briamber Scott. Got Gonzalez in the air and buries the jumper. Yeah, terrific job right there by Briamber Scott not to get too deep into the lane. And then Tonda kind of in no man's land there. Gave it up. <laughs> Shot clock at eight. Five back to Harmon at three. And buries it. Terrific job, though, of going inside out for Texas offensively. Holly takes a tumble. And one, Briamber Scott. Just like the last game, Fye and Taylor Jones, each with two fouls in the first half. And now you're putting Deanna Gaston back in there, who I 
I'm going to guess, kind of came out of the lineup just simply because she was not guarding uh, well enough defensively. It is a feisty, energetic Texas Tech team that's now on a 13-4 run. Harmon hits it again! Andrea, she was 4 for 28 on the year from three-pointers before tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Her percentages have been not good. 0% in the past five games uh, from three. Hadn't made one. And again, that's her third in conference play. Texas needing that without one of their best three-point shooters when Intanda with the block kicked ball. But Texas has taken now 11 more shots. Missed from outside. A double team in the post players as they catch lot look out down look the court. Wow. Shavers unable to complete it. Holly got back on D. Harmon pull up jumper. Oh, going glass with it. Shavers met by three Longhorns. I don't think he wanted, saw any foul. Vic Shaver didn't see a foul on that play, on this last play, but we see. Again, Texas Tech getting to the free throw line. 11 a.m. on ESPN2 against West Virginia. And it's a doubleheader later in the day. The women take on TCU at four here on LHN. Both teams currently in first place. Texas coming up with some big threes without one of their top three-point shooters, Sonia Morris. Gaston fouled down low. Coming off a career high, 24 points. And buries both. Which is unusual. Texas Tech is a pretty good free throw shooting team. Gerlich, nice move, and the bucket. Yeah, Bryn Gerlich, just so smooth. Gonzalez. Again, they go to Gaston. She was a shot-blocking machine, but we didn't see the offense that we're seeing this year from her early on in her college career. Having the consecutive practice days to be able to have the consistency that she's showing uh, right now. This is the second. Final 30 seconds of the half coming up here in Austin. Leitenheimer Great just blanketed yeah. Yeah, by Harmon. So Gerlich heading to the line, Texas Tech, just two for eight from the free throw line. In that previous matchup in Lubbock. Clock at five. Muhammad. Blocked by Gerlich with 1.5. Substitutions made for Texas Tech. Getting a little bit more length in there. Harmon to inbound. To Gaston, bobbled. And that'll do it for the first half. Texas Tech ends it by making six of their last eight field goals. For the Longhorns, Harmon and Gonzalez combining for 23 points. The second half is underway here in Austin. Longhorns are going to make it 10 straight wins at home, six consecutive overall. We've got matchup with Bruce Scott and Tiana Gaston. Shook Gaston off, unable to connect. Rory Harmon with 10 points and four assists, and half as many three pointers tonight as she has had all season long. Two of the first half, four all year coming in, coming in tonight. Excuse me, it's Muhammad finding Harmon with the shot clock winding down. Nice dish to Gaston. <laughs> And that gets Gaston going, hopefully zero for four in the first half, shooting-wise. In Norman for a number of years. Going to the floor is Scott. I'll no whistle, you. that's a turnover. I'll tell you what, Amina Muhammad is really having to work out there today. Gonzalez over to the freshman. This Gaston climbing over defenders for the board and drops it in. That's... Just her second field goal of the night. Well, and Texas getting some paint points here early on. That was another issue at Texas Tech in Lubbock. They only had 22 paint points in that game. Well, that would be foul number three, meanwhile, on Amina Muhammad. Back to the free throw line goes Texas Tech. 
This is the best place Texas Tech can be, scoring at the free throw line with the clock stopped. Instead, it's five. Well, Briamber Scott putting this team on her shoulders right now. Scored 28 against Texas in January, 21 against the Longhorns in the win against Texas here last year in Austin. And Texas Tech coming out with a full court press right here, which is tough against Roy Harmon. She just breaks it easily. Bye was wide open underneath. Holly couldn't find her in time. Holly wide open with her feet on the line. Buries it. That's a two. Our vantage point court side, it looked like Holly was on yeah. the line. They reviewed it. They gave her the three. Texas shooting 60% from three-point land tonight. On the season, they're shooting just over 30. Tremendous numbers without their best three-point shooters. Bray Amber Scott with her 15 and Bryn Gerlich with nine who's at the line right now. The rest of the team, zero for five uh, on the game thus far. Rory Harmon recently named to the Nancy Lieberman Award mid-season top 10 list and Naismith Trophy Player of the Week mid-season team. She's all over the award list. Having a great sophomore season. Well, again, it took her a while. Missed those first five games for Texas with that toe injury. Driving into the paint. So devastating with that pull-up jumper, but missed by Rips down the rebound and draws the foul on Briamber Scott. Drawing the second foul on Scott. Not fouling out. She's only fouled out once all year, but kind of consistently they have to watch those fouls and her minutes. That one misses from outside Gurley. Tech able to get an offensive rebound. Texas Tech three of nine from downtown. There is a turnover force number 11 by the Texas defense. And how did I again just kind of has her nose in the middle of everything. I like how Roy Harmon's running the team right now. Very composed, mm -hmm. decisive, knows exactly where she wants her teammates and what she wants run. Holly passed it in the air. Usually a cardinal sin, but Harmon can't miss from outside. She had four three-pointers all season heading into tonight. She's got three in this one. Yeah, and just let me re restate this. She was one for 17 in conference. There's Freeland with another mid. But Holly, is it stolen away by Weitenheimer? Over to Farrell. Nice move and one. Tech now with four scores tonight. And Farrell completes the three-point play. They've had a number of and ones. They're going to have to take advantage of those to get back into this one. It'll be interesting to see what Texas Tech uh, does with their man-to-man -man defense. Uh, Texas going into that dribble drive offense that they like to do. They're very aggressive, getting to the nail. Holly all alone. <laughs> Texas cannot miss from outside. Moffin reaches up for it. Holly was right there and called for the foul. That's a play right there that 99% of the time, Shea Holly's going to get a steal. Oh, excuse me, they are now less than 50% mopping three three-pointers on the night. Nine free throws. And still down by 17. Tapped right back into the hands of Gonzalez by Scott. Taylor Jones back in the game. Taylor Jones in limited minutes. Again, Texas only went to the line six times in Lubbock. In this half, Texas Tech just one for six from the field. Farrell driving, bumped into by Jones. That'll be foul number three. Nine for 18 today, free throw attempts for Texas Tech. Texas Tech is fourth in the Big 12 in free throw shooting, so this is uncharacteristic in shooting free throws. Down 52-35 with Jones hustling her way into the paint. And a foul on Texas. There's 10 of 19 from the line. But goes one for two. Harmon racing down the floor, testing the defense. Kicks it out to a wide open Gonzalez. Bangs one off the rim and a whistle. A lot of extracurricular activities going on inside. I was staring at the uh, great post 
battle going on inside. I mean, it is physical to be expected between these two teams. These mismatches, I think Texas has done a nice job of really just con continuing to have a lot of pressure. Gurley kicks it out from three-point land. It's Riley McKinney. Yeah, McKinney just coming off the bench a few moments ago. That's something that she can do. Gaston driving goes glass. When leading coming out of the half, it's 17 and 0. Final 30 seconds of the quarter on the way, and a turnover forced by Texas. Good job again by Rory Harmon, just getting out of the middle of all of that traffic. Texas has now forced 14 turnovers. They average about 22 per contest. Harmon holding for the final shot of the quarter. Holly Gonzalez looks up at the clock, kicks it out to Harmon, looking for a shot. Off the side of the rim. And Texas outscores Texas Tech 17-12 in the third. On we go to the final. final quarter is underway with Texas up by 16. Early. The dish down low to Lewis, stays with it and gets the bucket. Jazz Lewis, the 6'4 junior. Outscored opponents 41-23 in the fourth over the last two games. Look at Harmon's moves. Comes up short. Gaston, another offensive rebound for Texas. 13 on the night to Texas Tech's five. Harmon splitting the D. Oh, what a dish down low to five! That was really, really pretty. Harmon did a really nice job of finding five. We talk about her abilities out there. She hasn't come out for a moment today. Turnover number 15, forced by the Texas D. Harmon down the floor to Gonzalez. Clear path. And as good as Shaylee Gonzalez has been today, she hadn't scored since the second quarter, so. Reamber Scott scored 13 points in the first half. But just two in the second half, Andrew. Yeah, that's a great point. I think uh, Texas done a nice job against her here in the second half. She's also been just a little bit less active. Texas Tech players, some di different players taking shots here in the second half. Gonzalez probe in the D. Harmon. That step in the paint draws the foul. Harmon leading the team in fouls drawn more than 90 this year. Makes the first. <laughs> Which is unusual as of late. She struggled from the free throw line. Gerlich like fans wanted to travel. Wasn't caught. Maupin with a miss from outside. And Fai with the board. Tech hasn't scored in nearly three minutes. Harmon with space. Wide open Gaston. That assist will count. Absolutely, absolutely. She's become masterful in that transition. There's a foul on Fi. That foul was number four on Hattie Fi. Scott makes both. In the last three minutes plus. And Texas has just been so good at executing their offense. Gaston with the putback. Gaston up to 14 points. Scott launches one. Too strong. It's a sixth offensive rebound for Texas Tech, but they have not had many today. Look at those moves by Brianna Scott. Caught the Texas defense napping in a timeout on the floor. Still 20-point game, six to play from the Moody Center. Shot clock at seven. Gonzalez, no look to Gaston. Can't deliver. Maupin pulls up and buries it. Absolutely, Bailey Maupin, a confident shooter. Nice job by Texas Tech. Get down the floor. That is one fine-looking freshman out there for Texas Tech. Texas burning off some clock. Gaston has it poked away by Farrell. Holly comes in. She goes down along with Farrell. Tech comes up with it. Katie Farrell's that kind of player. She's going to dive on the floor throughout the 40 minutes of a game. 
Just trying to make something happen. Scott driving in on Holly. Wild shot, no good. Texas with numbers. Harmon down the floor to Gonzalez. That will be an assist for Hurry Harmon right there. No dribble right there by Shaley Gonzalez. Those two finding each other again. That'll be her fourth double-double of the season. Three players that haven't come off the floor today with Shea Holly, uh, Shaley Gonzalez, and Rory Harmon played the entire game and played very, very well. Gerlich baseline, where they changed it to Rory Harmon, and she is done for the night. Harmon fouls out with 15 points and 10 assists. <laughs> A terrific floor game by Rory Harmon today. Worked very hard throughout the game. This is kind of an early exit for her. Unusual to not have her on what she ran when Rory Harmon sat out those first five games. It's the second time Harmon has fouled out this season. So no Harmon, no Sonia Morris. We'll see what Texas does down the stretch here with four to play. Gonzalez with a team high 17 points. When Intana spinning in the paint, doesn't get it to fall. Gerlich comes up with it. And here's Farrell. You see the intensity by the... Scott driving and dishing. Gerlich from Steph Curry range, buries it! 14 point game. Gaston calmly finds Gwen and Tonda. Holly wide open. Five underneath, drawing the foul. Watch this shot by yeah, Bryn Gerlich. Look at her range. We've seen that from her uh, throughout her career. 64% on threes over her last two games. Tonight, two for five that category. Uh, it's just kind of still kicking off rust. Long pass. Free line. And traveling called on Kyla Freelon, the freshman. Gonzalez, two defenders in her face, needs some help, goes to the floor, and there is a turnover. Texas Tech very aggressive right now defensively. Stay out of those corners. Gaston bumped into Farrell. Gaston picked up her fourth. Fai also has four. Farrell makes the free throw. Let's see what Texas does against this uh, full court trap. Gaston, Gonzalez, and two defenders in her face. And again, throws it away. Tech comes up with it. Maupin, driving, turned it over, but a foul right before the turnover. Yeah, that foul was on Hadi Fai, I believe, and that will be her fifth, so she'll be out of the game as well. Fai gone, Harmon gone, Morris not available tonight. Maupin at the line for Tech. Don't get the ball that far, that close to the baseline. You gotta get open, give yourself some space. Texas, another opportunity to bring it down the floor this time, trying to beat the press. Gonzalez, the double team, they want a traveling called, no whistle. Holly had Jones wide open underneath the bucket. Wow, that was just a lot of things could have gone wrong on that play in those first 15 seconds. Two and a half to play. Holly nearly loses it and turns it over. Three on two now, back the other way. Freelon kicks it out wide. Maupin from the corner. Ten point game. Here we go, 2.15 to play. When in Tonda. It's a little bit like Groundhog Day right now. Every time Texas throws the ball in. 11 to two run by Texas Tech since Harmon left the game. Kaylee Gonzalez doing a better job of catching the ball in the middle of the floor, but Tech will continue with that pressure. Two to play. Nearly turned it over again, but a foul on Freelon. And she's done for the night. Freelon is certainly a tremendous shooter. Sixteen points on the night for Gaston. Scott racing through the defense, hacked it by Gaston, and she gets called for the foul. Gaston, Harmon, and Fai all fouling out. Remember, she played at Texas her freshman year and transferred to Texas Tech last season. She 
can score as well, but certainly somebody that's going to go out there and challenge the ball handlers for Texas. Only averaging about nine minutes per game this year. Scott at the line. Across half court, Chevalier. And Gonzalez, minute and a half to play. Texas with some breathing room now. Dick Schaefer saying go towards the basket. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Gonzalez. Like a foul right there on Ashley Chevalier. South Carolina is so much that any opponent has to deal with. Want to remind you, LSU and South Carolina coming up on Super Bowl Sunday. And this one here in Austin. Starting to get out of reach with 115 to play. However, Scott draws a foul. Dwindling down here. It scored 73 points without her, missing her first game as a Longhorn with a lower body injury. Hamid Jones. Yeah. Farrell with the foul. Nice decision right there. Just five points. Three players in double figures for Texas. And... Makes one of two. Final minute of play coming up here in Austin. Gerlich fires one up and misses. Jones has it batted away out of bounds. Lady Raiders have outscored the Longhorns 24-19 here in the fourth. Muhammad. And Gonzalez was fouled. But you brought up the AP rankings. Texas moving up from 24 to 20 on the verge of their sixth consecutive victory. Shaley Gonzalez lead the way with another 20-point game. She's got 21. You'd have to imagine the voters will start taking notice. Absolutely. And it's just so important, as I mentioned a second ago, that Texas doesn't step their toe uh, as they finish off this season. So they, uh, these are going to be big games for Texas to, you know, continue to climb. Remember, they had that great run last year, won 14 straight. Uh, Texas did before losing in the Elite Eight. Farrell called for the foul. Free throw attempt number 29 on the night coming up for Texas. Gonzalez up to 22 points. Texas now with 30 free throws attempted after just six in Lubbock last month. Final 30 seconds coming up here in Austin as Tech moves it around. McKinney with the three. Tomorrow, despite the fact that this is going to probably be a good victory, and I think that's an offensive foul right there by Tonda, who just shows her frustration. Keeping an eye on the benches, the coaches, everything is... Well, I've been watching Vic Schaefer for the last, you know, three minutes on the clock, two and a half minutes on the clock, and 20 minutes of running time. He's about to lose his mind over there. Final 20 seconds coming up. Gonzalez double team. Somehow Muhammad came up with it. Jump ball, possession arrow, Texas. Vic Schaefer's blood pressure is going through the roof since Harmon left the game. Again, get it to Taylor uh, Jones right there with her height. I think she can see over the top. It's just not a good situation. And there's a foul with 10.8. Interesting, Texas is going to win this game by double digits mm -hmm. despite going the last four minutes plus without a field goal. Shaylee Gonzalez, another big night, 25 points, one shy of her season high. Brianna Scott, so much for winning by double digits. And that's 20, 26 points, I believe, for Brianna Scott. And they will not foul Gonzalez there. This one comes to an end. Texas gets revenge after falling in Lubbock, taking this one 80 to 71. The Longhorns make it six consecutive victories, 10 here at the Moody Center.